They say the best camera is the one that you have on you, so today I'm actually going to talk to you about how to make videos with your phone. So most workflows when it comes to pre-production and post-production are pretty much the same regardless of what camera you are using. So I'm basically going to just talk about like how to handle a phone, how to do audio, and how to actually do lighting. First thing is handling. Knowing where you're going to be uploading is actually very important because it'll tell you whether you want to be shooting things in landscape or portrait mode. Platforms like YouTube actually prefer you to do things in landscape mode. If you are doing something on like something like Facebook or TikTok, then it's probably better if you do it in portrait mode. And then programs like Instagram actually only use a square. So knowing where you're going to be uploading will actually determine how you're going to film your uh, video. Next, if you are going to be recording things in landscape mode, I do recommend getting a phone holder. These typically go for about 15 bucks and then they actually help you out because you can put your phone onto a handle. And now I'm actually filming myself and it's a lot more steady because I have it on a handle. The thing that I like about my handle though is that it doubles as a tripod. So if I ever need to throw my phone down, then I can easily do it and a lot more quickly compared to most other setups. If you do think you're actually going to be recording between like freehand and tripod mode, then I do recommend getting a Joby tripod. The legs are actually manipulable. You can have them like wrapped around a tree or a pole and you won't have to worry about the rigidness of a straight legged tripod. I do have the one for DSLR, so it's a bit big for, you know, freehanding it, but they do make a smaller one. If you're primarily using your phone as a camera and not just for selfie videos, uh, you I do recommend you look into uh, phone cages. I found one on Amazon and they have a tripod screw on the bottom and three cold shoe mounts on the top. So you can mount other accessories that you need on top of your camera like microphones and lighting. The other thing I want to talk about when it comes to like doing a selfie video is to know where your camera is. You typically want it to be on the inside, that way it's more aligned to the center of your body so you don't have to be like super weird on like how you angle the camera while you're recording yourself. Next thing I would like to talk about is audio. So I'm pretty sure that you can tell that this is just using the uh, the onboard microphone, which isn't too bad because I am in my room and it's pretty quiet. But if you are going to be like out and about and you're going to be recording, let's say, um, like downtown or what have you, then you should use a lavalier microphone. Okay, and now I'm recording myself with a microphone right here. So you're probably going to see that it does sound a little bit better. Now the main thing that I want to bring up with audio is that there are very specific kind of connections that you can use with a phone and other ones that you can't really do that well. They now make Bluetooth uh, lavaliers now, but the unfortunate thing is that Bluetooth really isn't the most stable connection, so you need to be really careful if you're going to be like filming in public. Also, if you are going to be filming with a phone with a 3.5mm jack and you buy a lavalier for that, that is great, but you need to make sure that you get the right end piece for it. So on the right, you can see a jack that has a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. Uh, these are mostly used for headphones because it's trying to send out two signals, left and right channels, or for microphones that are usually meant for computers, DSLRs, and other consumer type of uh, products. The jack on the left, though, has a tip, two rings, and then the sleeve. These are meant to transmit a stereo sound as well as a microphone signal. So you see these mostly with cell phones and you want to make sure that you get the correct jack for the correct device or at the very least just know what you're getting yourself into and getting the right adapter. Also, if you're using a new iPhone or an Android that uses the new USB type C type of plug for the microphone and you plan on getting one of these jacks adapted to a USB C, be aware that a lot of those adapters are actually only meant for headphones and will not transmit microphone signals. So just do your research before you buy an adapter and you should be okay. If you're looking for an external microphone for your phone, then these Rode mics actually do work on your phone. You just need to make sure that you have a proper adapter for them. And again, if you get the uh, cage that I recommended earlier, then you can mount it on top of your phone. If you're planning on using the lavaliers, but you kind of want to be further away from the camera, then you can get an external audio recorder. Uh, these are pretty cheap. This is my Sony. I forgot the model number. Good job, Ray. This is a Sony uh, UX560. Uh, these are pretty cheap and they let you plug in a lavalier directly and then you just sync sound afterwards. And finally, I want to talk about lighting. As you can tell, I actually have some lights set up to help illuminate my face right now. 
if you are going to be a filmmaker who's making like more dramatic things with your phone, then I do recommend looking into external lights like this. This is an Aperture 198. They go for about a hundred bucks and these are very good lights. They are dimmable. This one is monocolor and they also run off of NP batteries, which I have an abundance of anyway, so it works with my workflow. If you don't have $100 just lying around to buy new lights or you don't want to be able to just if you don't want to just wait on Amazon to ship you something new, then you can get these clamp lights at like Home Depot and they work just the same way and they're about 15 bucks. So they actually do work wonders. When I was in high school, I used these to make all of my student films and they were very very useful. They do sell these uh, $15 like ring lights for your phone and I typically don't recommend them. I bought one as a test and it broke within a week so I can't really attest to that. What I can recommend though is on your phone you may actually be able to see that there is a light switch on and off that will help illuminate yourself in darkness while you're recording a selfie video. This is the least intrusive way of getting more light into your video and I also feel like it's just the most simplest, most straightforward way of doing things. And those are my tips on making videos on your phone. Have you made a movie with your phone? Link us up in the comment section down below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more of your favorite technician. I'm Ray signing off. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay creative.